I'm Rob and today we're at the Brushmakers in Upham. The Brushmakers is Grade 2 listed. It's early 19th century this building but in former lives it was a school and indeed a Brushmakers. Anyway lots more about this pub when we, we get back later on. Until then we're going this way. A spring well and truly here. Lovely Narcissi. Look at that. Now at the end of Shoe Lane, the route proper will take us to the left. Down past the, uh, the village pond. But we're going to turn right to have a look at the church. So we're going up here. So the daffodils are looking gorgeous. I like the sculpture in the front garden of the, uh, the church cottage. And this is Upham Church. It's the Blessed Mary Church. It's 13th century, but it was remodelled in the 19th century by none other than G.E. Street, who was uh, the chap that designed the old bailey. Uh, it's also quite famous for the, the stabling of um, roundhead horses during the Civil War. Again, more about that later. Uh, so between two vast yew trees lies the church porch and the entrance and it looks like it might be open. We'll have a look. So lovely inside, wooden pews, lovely stained glass window. And it's a bustling thriving church and I'm lucky because I'm in here just in time. In about 10 minutes, it'll be turned over to the toddler group that they're busy <laughs> preparing for. Hi! <laughs> Come and join us! <laughs> Free plug there. <laughs> the lovely little upstairs room here. That gives you a good view down into the church. It also gives you a good view of one of the stained glass windows. Now look at that, you don't often get this close, do you? And all made possible by this chap. So that was lovely, the ladies there were really, really nice, really friendly. What a lovely church. A lovely cottage over there too. Anyway, we're going to go out under that beautiful lamp and turn left back the way we came, there's Upham House over there and start our walk proper So just past the pond, that the sign, we bend round to the left from the Cheriton to Alsford Road. And we take this footpath into the field. Now we follow the well-worn path. We're in the South Downs on the chalk, so there's, there's lots of flint like this. It's laying on top of the cloud ground. And uh, it was used years ago for facing buildings. It's called flint napping. And uh, flint only occurs where there's chalk, so you know it's chalk underneath if you see flint. <laughs> oh no dear. And there's Big Path Farm in the distance. So 
so Upham situated seven miles southeast of Winchester. Um, Upham is a strange name for it because it actually sits in the valley. Um, up here you can understand it because Upham is Old English for an upper homestead. Um, so maybe the origins of it were up on the hill here somewhere, I don't know. But that's the name it carries. It used to be on the Roman road from Winchester to Porchester. Uh, but that was bypassed in the 1800s by uh, a road, a toll road actually, um, across Stroudwood Common, which is down where Lower Upham is now, <laughs> which is even stranger, a Lower Upper homestead. <laughs> We're heading towards Street End and the farm you can see in the distance. Again over on our right, lovely views of the uh, South Hampshire countryside and the slight hazy hilly bit in the distance, that's the Isle of Wight. Keep following the Monarch's Way as the path bends left to go through Street End, presumably Street End Farm. Enjoy the magnificent views. What a tough job farming is. Think of all the equipment. That's cost a fortune. Oh, so the really wild bird food company. Now we're going to turn left out of the farm along the lane and we're carrying straight on at the finger post and there's a buried reservoir over on our left quite common in this uh, this part of the downs and as the road bends off to the left we follow this path to the right to take us on to Stevens Castle Down beautiful beautiful views Now that looks like old Winchester Hill over in the distance. As we start to come down here, when you can see the chalk breaking through on the path, look out for this kissing gate on the left that takes you out onto Stephen's Castle Down. That's where we're heading. Stephen's Castle Down, it's 389 feet above sea level. It's a special an area of special interest for nature conservation. Um, it's got another name, Bishop's Down, but the Stephen's Castle Down seems to come from the days when King Stephen was at war with the uh, Empress Maud, and uh, it's believed there were earthworks here. Well, I can't see them now. Anyway, um, in recent years it's been used for racing gallops. And they were used by the famous Bill Whiteman stable at uh, our farm, which we'll pass later. Um, that ceased to be quite a while back now. And uh, since then, Brendan Powell, the jockey and trainer, he was using it. Um, he was the Grand National winning jockey in 1988 with Ryman Reason, which is probably why you know the name. Anyway, I don't think he does it anymore either, so I don't think there are any more racing trainers using it. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, let's get on downhill to that stile and out onto the road there by the houses. Just be a little bit careful coming down the hill because, uh, as I say, it's chalk underlying, a little bit of clay here, so that can be slippery at it. It's quite steep. Beautiful scenery, though. Hampshire really is a glorious county, isn't it? Just up there, don't you can see them? Uh, three deer just run into the bushes. And we leave the down behind to emerge onto this road turning left. This is Dean Farm. And a lovely long barn there. Beautiful. But we come off the tarmac to take the track.
That's the SO pipeline that runs all the way from Foley to Gatwick Airport. At the end of the path we come out on this mainish road. It's quite busy at times and very very fast at times so happy wits about you a little bit more but we're going to turn left to head up round the bend up the hill. A little bit of celandine on the verges as well as some gorgeous spring daffodils. And after that little short bendy walk up this main road, we come to the top and we turn left down this little gravel lane. A little bit of civil engineering going on here at the crossroads. Not sure what, but we carry straight on. If you want to cut the walk short, then that lane ahead heads to Big Path Farm and round a couple of bends back into the village of Upham. But we are going to turn right. Well, there's some stump grinding going on behind me. That's what's uh, ruining the piece. But the large house on the right is Balmore Park and it's uh, early 18th century. farm over on the left where all the tree works going on and that was the Bill Whiteman racing stables in the 70s stroke 80s. I've got to move. We love this, lanes where the grass grows down the middle of the road. You don't get that in London, do you? Oh no! So there's this wood coat through the bushes. And we carry on along this lovely, quiet lane. Just listen, you can't hear a thing. Distant aeroplane, that's about it. You know, the peace and quiet here, it's, it's making me think of that terrible war in Ukraine. I know I've got Ukrainian and I've got Russian viewers. And you know what? Your people like me, you enjoy peace, you enjoy walking. So, Mr Putin, if you're watching, which invariably you're not going to be. <laughs> but if you were watching, I'd just say... Nobody's out to get you. The West don't want to invade Russia. We just want to live alongside you peacefully. And is it not better for your young boys to be walking the countryside in walking boots, enjoying the flowers and the peace and quiet, rather than the terrible destruction that they're set upon at the moment? So, please think again. Uh, this refers to the avian flu that's going around at the moment in the Bishop's Walden area. And at this very modern house, as the road bends round to the right, we turn left. After a short way, we take this path off to the right. place for a picnic if you've packed one. We come out of the countryside into the recreation ground in Upham. So 
There's a nice little pavilion. And a lovely little play park for the kids. Some more picnic benches. We emerge back out into the village of Upham. Once home to Royal Navy types. And even a High Sheriff of Hampshire at one point. And we're heading down Shoe Lane. Beautiful blackbird song. And here we are back at the pub. So that was a very pleasant six mile walk. Very nice weather and a very nice pub, which you're about to learn a bit more. Um, I've spoken to the landlady, Nikki, and she's going to tell us a few secrets about the pub. So come along for a drink with me. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Oh, there's also a nice little garden. So, this is Nikki Taylor. She's the landlady of the Brushmakers Inn. And uh, she's got some very interesting stories to tell us. So, um, what sort of history has the inn got, Nikki? Well, it's got um, quite a chequered history. So, um, various tomes that have been written about it. Um, and successive landlords have told stories as well. So, originally, um, it was built in the 1580s, so 1580. Um, and then, with later additions in Victorian times, but um, the oldest part of the building, it's underneath is the cellar there. And um, previous landlords have said that their dogs have been scared to go down there. Um, and, and they always feel uncomfortable in the cellar. Oh, um, really? So there's ghosts yes. about? I mean, I've, I've never felt unhappy down there. But this dog, Polly, actually, she won't go down there at all. She just will stare at the top. And, oh. and she's like a shadow. She follows me everywhere. Yeah. But she gets quite, you know, funny about going down there. Oh. Um, Not the ghost of Oliver Cromwell. Well, yes, well, because <laughs> apparently he stayed here. So um, in the records in the local church, just up the road, mm -hmm. the, um, it shows that his, his men stayed stabled their horses in the church and um, I think they were sent a bill from the diocese for the damage they did for so a good old clean up so I think they just sort of mucked everywhere but allegedly his men and Cromwell stayed here and that was at the time that the, um, Bishop's Waltham Palace and Bishop's Waltham mm -hmm. was well, bombed by Cromwell basically yep. so that was you know the Bishop of Winchester's Palace and obviously everyone knows the ruins now yeah they're famous and it's a beautiful place to go oh great but, um, are there any more horns things here or well, various members of staff and myself have um, experienced a few things. And the previous landlord, actually, his little boy used to complain all the time. Um, Alfie, when, when he was sort of three and four, he was always running into um, Keith and his mother's um, bedroom saying that my blankets have been pulled off again. You know, oh, and they say, don't be silly. But, you know, one night Keith said he was, you know, looked in bed and looked so the blankets were coming off and yet he was asleep. So it was very strange. but. My sister had the same experience staying here. Oh. Um, in fact, she was in a different bedroom from that little boy, but yeah. the front bedroom here, which where apparently Mr. Chickets was murdered, um, <laughs> yes, um, for his money. And um, so, you know, whether that's true or not, but the story of Mr. Chickets is, is in nearly every sort of record of the pub that you, you hear, oh, you read. Crikey, no, not um, heard that. Yes, but apparently they say when the Mary Rose was pulled up that he stopped haunting the place, but I don't know what the link from the Mary Rose coming up in, you know, is <laughs> to do with here. But I don't know whether he had some money on board there or, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, so, you know, all, all the stories about the place are much older than the records say the building is. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I was saying to you earlier that upstairs you can clearly see the 
the shape, you know, of you know the old Inglenook fireplace, and um, it, yes, it's very interesting. Yeah, and being an ex-school, are there any children that haunt the pub? Well, uh, myself and other people who worked here continually heard footsteps running up and down. So you're downstairs, and it's busy. Even the customers can hear above that, so running across the floor. So quite heavy footsteps, but it sounds like running. You know, one occasion I thought someone had broken into our flat, so I raced up the stairs, and you know there was nothing there. But I just had that funny feeling that someone had just left the room. Um, so it's you know quite disturbing. Some some of the staff members won't work on their own here because they're quite frightened. You know, <laughs> the glasses start swinging. You know, the beer tankers start swinging. Things jump off shelves. I always say, well, that's gravity. It's an old building. But sometimes I'm not so sure. You know, it's, you know. <laughs> um, one thing that really did disturb me. I've never been worried about any anything else here. Was um, I was upstairs and in the hallway. I saw a boy and a girl. I'd say the girl was about 12, and the boy maybe eight. They were holding hands. But then. The wind, well, it looked as though wind was blowing her hair, and her hair was sort of blowing to the side. And she gave quite a sort of malevolent smile that, you know, I don't know, I felt really spooked because I could see them quite clearly. Mm. And at first I thought it was someone messing around in fancy dress because she was wearing a pinafore. He had on some sort of rough blue trousers, but almost made out of sackcloth, but, but finer than sackcloth, not yeah. quite hessy and a bit finer, but quite sort of, you know, old-fashioned. Um, so I said, well, you know, I can see you, but I'd like you to go away now, because my sister's into those things, so, you know, <laughs> she said that's the best thing to say. And they just sort of, dis they just dissolved. But that, that's the only time I've, I've seen that. Yeah. But I wonder whether the footsteps that we all hear are those two running up and down. Um, because, you know, one of the, apparently it was a school here once, um, and a dentist apparently in the past. So there's, there's all sorts of stories about the pub. So. Well, that's been absolutely fascinating, Nick. Thank you very much. No, thank you, and, uh, Yeah, lovely pub. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>